Good morning. Today's practice is soaring and we will honor birds in flight and do some wing work for our own shoulders and arms. Find yourself in a comfortable seated position and we'll invite three sounds of the bell and share a for inviting the bell. body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hearers awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Today's mudra is Janana Mudra. I'll show a picture card of it. It's the same as Chin Mudra, but we will face it upward to receive energy. So Janana Mudra, we take our thumb and our pointer finger and bring them gently together. And then let the other three fingers just be opening. We can do this with both hands. And then we take this and turn this so that it's facing upwards as we're seated. Bring your shoulders up and back and relax the back of your neck. This is the seal of wisdom balances elements of fire, agni, and vayu, wind, within the body. Practicing Janana Mudra during meditation can help still and stabilize the mind. It will evoke feelings of lightness and reverses the outward flow of prana, directing energy back towards the body. And as I mentioned, Janana Mudra with our thumb to our pointer finger can be used both to face upwards as well as to face downwards. So if you are more in the mood for rooting and groundedness, you can face this downwards. And if you're more in the mood for drawing in your energy flow, towards your body, you can face it upwards. So choose whatever is best for your body. And I'll show you, I'll stand up and show you the two options. So if you're seated, you might have Janana Mudra gently resting on your, on the tops of your knees like this. This would be the Janana Mudra gesture. Or if you wished for grounding, you could still have your fingers in the same shape, but you could have it focused down and that would be chin mudra. And let's invoke the sacred sound of Om, the sound of the universe, which encompasses all other sounds and help harmonize our nervous systems drawing a connectedness to all things. Om is three parts. The first sound is ah, the second sound is ah, and the third sound is the vibration, the mm. So take a deep breath in. Ah. And try that again. Deep inhale through your nostrils. 
Exhaling the sound of Om. Ah. And one last time. Inhale. Um, notice how you feel. Today's practice in honor of birds that soar effortlessly in the wind currents will honor our bodies and let our breath lead movement. It's said that when it rains, most birds head for shelter. And the eagle is the only bird that in order to avoid the rain starts flying above the clouds. So think about that image, the rain in your life, the clouds and soaring far, far above. And we'll come now to our backs moving gent gently with loving kindness. And as we come to our backs, we're going to be bringing our bodies to fish pose or matsi yasana. Matsi yasana. So for fish pose, the most comfortable way, you can use blocks, but I would recommend taking a blanket and rolling the blanket so that it makes a nice center for your spine. And you want to have your head supported as well. So you can take something else and roll that up and just make sure that it's supported. If you wish for something more significant to open the chest area and the shoulders, you can use blocks. But for right now, I would recommend we start with a rolled blanket. Once you have your, your center area, you're gonna place the base of your spine at the bottom of that. And you're going to lower yourself down very slowly and gently, and you can adjust until your shoulders start to come to the ground and you notice that your heart center opens very naturally. And if your, your legs can be bent with your knees uh, facing upwards and your feet on the ground, or you can place your feet out flat. If you place your feet out flat, just make sure that your lower back is still feeling good. And now with our arms, we're going to create a cactus shape. So I'll sit up for a moment and show you this is cactus. So we're teeing our arms and then bringing them up. And see if this is, this is even possible for your body. If not, you can just have your arms resting by your sides. Soften the jaws. Soften your gaze or even close your eyes. And feel your heart center opening the space on the front chest. Feel your shoulders coming down with each breath. And I'll read to you just a very short quote by Mark Nepo. When you can, watch small birds fly. Notice how sudden winds cause them to dip and swerve and how they keep flying. Breathe deeply and know your heart is such a bird that its dips and swerves create such a discomfort of newness that you have no choice to, be, to experience, but to experience if you are to keep flying. 
you have no choice but to experience if you are to keep flying. Let your heart open like a bird. And ask your body, where can you soften? What more is possible? Is there anything that you can let go into the earth that's holding your body? Matsya Sana, fish pose. And take one more deep nourishing breath. And to come out of this posture, we want to move gently. So first bring your arms down from cactus to your side and then let your knees come over to one side and let your body roll off of the, the block or the blanket and then reach behind and take the blanket and just push it a little bit away and place one hand by your face and press yourself up back to seated position. We're going to start with a little bit of massage. And if you wish, you can use some lotion or oil, just a little bit, um, to help with some of the dryness with all of this wind that we've been experiencing lately. There's a lot of vata energy, and that can create a little bit of imbalance. So we're going to do some gentle massage to create a, a more of a balance. I'm using just a pure coconut oil. And so the first part is actually you need to rub your hands together, whether you're, you're using oil or lotion. Start to create some heat and prana. And the great thing about using this pure coconut oil is in the cool weather, it solidifies. So I actually can't even massage it until I really rub it and get it to come back to a liquid form. So we're rubbing our hands together and generating prana or energy. And we'll start with the back of our scalp. Don't worry if you're getting a little bit of oil or lotion into your hair. There's nothing wrong with that. Find the nabi. There's two nabi centers right at the back of your scalp. And let your thumbs come in there. Sometimes if you have a bit of a headache, this is a very good spot to massage. And it is tender, so less is more. And if your arms start to get tired, you know, feel free to bring them down at any moment. Deep nourishing breaths. And now bring your fingertips by your spine along the back of your neck, but not actually touching the spine. So find the muscles along the back of the neck and just gently work your fingers up and down. And let your body call to you. It will tell you what, how the intensity of the massage and where it wishes for your fingers to go. Up and down the back of the neck. 
And now let's rest the right arm for a moment and we'll work with our right side of the body. So take your left palm and find your trapezial muscles along the back of your shoulder in between. So here's your collarbone. And if you just reach to slightly the back, wherever you can reach, right, you can rub your lotion or oil into those muscles that get very stiff. And now let's do the other side. So take, place your left hand down and take your right hand. And again, find the trapezial muscles. Right behind the collarbone. in between your neck and your shoulder. These muscles hold a lot of tension. You might feel some knots in there. Bring your breath to wherever you feel sensation. Now right hand can come down and bring your left hand to your shoulder. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more of the coconut on. My skin is so, so dry from all this wind. Of course, I'll probably regret this when we're in downward facing dog and I'm slipping all over the place. Bring your left hand now to your right shoulder and just go around in a very large, gentle circle. The joints should be massaged in a circular way. And now change direction and relax your right arm down. It can meet your legs. And left arm now can do some stroking down the yang side of the right arm. So a downward drawing of energy. The side that tans is your yang side. And now find the elbow and do very gentle circular motions on this joint and change directions. And now down the young side of the forearm. Later on after class, if this felt good to you, you might want to take some more time on any of the muscles that you find that could use some more tender attention. Really nice places right near the elbow on the top of the forearm, you can massage in that area. You can use the heel of your hand for more pressure. And now come to the right wrist and circle the right wrist can even form a little circle with your left hand and just go around. And now brush the top of the hand. And take your left hand and kind of twist and turn down th your thumb pressing along the edges of the thumbnail and down pointer finger and around the fingernail and down middle finger around the edges 
of the nail around fourth finger and around fourth fingers nail edges pressing on the nail bed and then pinky so this is uh we're drawing this prana or this energy down through the body and now let's do the other side so rest your left hand gently. You may wanna switch if your legs are crossed, switch the cross of your legs and place your left palm on your left knee. You can keep it in the chin mudra if you'd like for more grounding. So thumb and point your finger together and hand just resting down. And let's find left, uh, left shoulder and do a gentle circular massage. And switching directions. And now down the young side of the left arm. Finding left elbow and circling around left elbow in one direction and then the other. And down the yang side of the left arm, the forearm, maybe pressing a little bit into that soft area of muscle right below the elbow. And now making a little circle around your wrist and letting your wrist twist. Release if you have your hand in that mudra shape, release that. And across the top of the hand, Noticing the elasticity of your skin. And if it seems like you're a little dehydrated, in other words, if you were to pinch that skin and it's staying up, take a drink of water. Down the left hand. Now finding the thumb and twisting and wringing around the thumbnail and second finger. And around pointer fingers, thumb, uh, fingernail. And third finger. Pressing around the nail bed. And fourth finger. And pinky finger. Finishing with pressing right around, gently around the edges of the nail and stroking the nail bed from the base through the tip. And bring your hands down to your knees and just notice how you feel. Is there a feeling of lightness? Our affirmation today is I soar effortlessly on the wind currents of life. If that resonates with you, you can repeat it with me. I soar effortlessly 
on the wind currents of life. I soar effortlessly on the wind currents of life. And now let's cactus our arms as we did when we were lying down. And with our inhale, we're going to open our arms. And with our exhale, we're going to bring our elbows together. Inhaling our hands in prayer and inhaling again ex with our elbows coming up and over our head, and then exhaling, bringing our elbows down to the center. Inhale, open your arms to cactus. Exhale, bring your arms together. Exhale, come down. Inhale, raise your elbows up over the back of your head. Exhale, back down again. Maybe switching the cross of your feet. Inhaling, open. Chin up. Exhale, come together. Inhaling, rising elbows up. And exhaling, bringing your elbows down. All the way down, prayer, hands and heart center. And we'll do a little bird wing roll. So bring your tips of your fingers to your shoulders and make your little bird wings. Roll your shoulders up and back and around. Little bird wings preparing to soar through the wind currents of life. Feeling the popping and crackling. And now bring your bird wings around the other direction. Breath leading movement. and come to stillness for a moment. Pause and notice how you feel. Maybe you're starting to feel a sense of lightness. Raise your arms and see if you can clasp your elbows or even your forearms behind your head. And see if you can inhale and stretch over to the right. So stretching left side body and feeling a long stretch. Be careful of your neck, so release your grip. And exhale to the center. And now inhale and stretch the right side body. And one more time on each side. Inhale in the center and exhale to the right. Inhale and exhale. Very nice. We'll do a seated twist. So bring your legs out in front of you and you might want to tap them up and down and release some of the tension from how we were seated. Maybe stretch your toes and wiggle out your ankles. And maybe pause and take another little drink of water. Sipping like a bird. So we'll bring our right leg bent right foot on the floor and bring that over our left leg, which is outstretched. Straighten through your spine, elongate through the top of your crown and wrap your left arm around 
your right knee. Raise your right wing up to the sky. Deep inhale and bring it around behind you. Feeling the loveliness of this asana, this posture. The stretching through left shoulder and right hip. Chin is strong, gaze is soft. Preparing to soar. And unwrap, coming back to center, bring right foot next to left. Left foot comes to the ground, left knee is bent. Bring left foot over right. Elongate through your spine, flex your right foot. And wrap your right arm around your left leg. Raise your left wing up to the sky. Deep inhale and let that come behind you to balance you as you twist over to the left. Where can you soften? Notice where there's sensation in your body and breathe there. Maybe it's left back shoulder blade or left hip. Wherever you're gripping, release the grip. And now come back to center and shake out your legs. Bring your feet up so that they are flat to the ground and your knees are bent. And we're going to do an alternate cat-cow because this way, in case your wrists are ever tender, you have this option. So place your hands to the fronts of your shins. And with your inhale, bring your body forward and raise your chin. And with your exhale, round your spine and roll back, letting your fingertips possibly touch your knees. And now rising forward, inhaling. Let your breath move your body. Exhale, round. Inhaling. Exhaling. Two more times. Inhaling. And exhaling. Feeling your back body opening. And exhaling. And bring your hands to the ground. And your knees are going to come around. We're going to do thread the needle. This is great asana for opening the shoulders. So we're in tabletop, pressing strong through wrists and elbows and shoulders. With your inhale, bring your left palm in front of your face and raise your right arm or your wing up to the sky. And then with your exhale, feed your right arm underneath your body in between left arm and your knees and come down very gently to rest on your right temple or your right cheek. And then you can stretch your left arm forward if that feels good to you. And feel the opening all around the left shoulder blade, even into the pectoral muscles of the chest. Breathe into the sensation. Let your body melt to the earth. Good. 
And slide your left hand near your face and gently bring your right arm out so you're back into table. Right hand in front of your face and left arm with your inhale rises up. Deep inhale and then comes through that opening between right arm and knees and rest gently on your left temple or left cheek. If it's in your practice, bringing your right arm forward. Remember, you should feel no pain at any time during your yoga practice. If something is too much, find a posture that feels comforting and gentle to your body. So sometimes that just means coming out slightly, backing off of the posture. There's no need to do each posture at 100%. Some days it might be good to just do 60% or 30% even. Ask yourself what your body needs and your body will tell you. One more breath. And now let your right arm come down towards your face and gently rise up very slowly because we've done in this inverted position. And we're going to come back and rest in Balasana or child's pose for a moment. Just a moment. So widen your knees if you wish and bring your big toes together and let your arms draw out in front of you and rest your forehead on the ground. Deep breaths here. Feel the opening in your upper back. a sense of peacefulness in your physical body. One more breath. And now start to come forward either to Sphinx, just to stretch the lower back, or if you wish, you can bring your arms out a little bit in front of you and this is more of a seal pose. Hips are still on the ground. And if your lower back is tender, just bring your hands by your, by your face and maybe you're in baby cobra, Bhujangasana. But feel the muscles in your lower back wherever you are. And now lower yourself to the ground and we're going to push up into downward facing dog. Let your neck, neck relax. And if your shoulders are tender and this doesn't work for you to be inverted like this, you can also do this on the back of a chair or up against a, a wall and take a little bit of the pressure off. Pedal your heels. And when you're ready, bring your body to stillness. And crisscross your feet until you come to standing forward fold, Uttanasana. Knees are bent generously. Your chest can be resting on your upper thigh muscles. Bring your left hand in front of your face and open your right wing. Deep inhale and exhale to the ground. Bring your right hand in front of your face and open your left wing with your inhale and to the ground. 
And from here, we're going to step our right foot back to crescent lunge. So both sets of toes are facing forward. Our left knee is bent and we're going to rise up, deep inhale. And when we exhale, open to the left. This will feel a little awkward, may feel a little awkward, at least it does to me. Inhale back to the center and frame your left foot, hands to the ground. Bring your left foot back to meet your right and press up to downward facing dog again. Three deep nourishing breaths. And this time we're going to bring our left, sorry, our right foot forward. So we're in crescent lunge, right knee is bent, raising up, both feet are facing forward. Deep inhale and open now to the right. Preparing to soar. Inhaling back to center and framing your right foot, hands to the ground. This time come to plank. You can bring your knees down if you wish. Chest to the ground, chin to the ground, rising up to downward, to upward facing dog. And pressing back to downward facing dog. Very nice job. You'll start to feel your heels releasing the muscles in the calves and the Achilles. And now crisscross your legs and your back to forward fold. Bring your hands to your feet and pitter patter your way up your legs to your knees and then scoop your spine and slowly come up to standing in Tadasana. Feet are firmly rooted to the ground. Relax your knees. And you're just going to raise your, your wings and open them over to the right. Deep inhale. And now come back to the center. Let your knees be gentle and open your wings to the left. And back to the center, sweeping up with your inhale and then bringing your hands down by your sides. Pause and notice how you feel. And we will close our standing practice today with a little bit of qigong. This is soaring crane, crane touching water. So we're going to introduce a little bit of ancient Chinese energy work into our practice today. And you'll see that many of the elements are similar to the Ayurvedic practices or the asanas from other traditions. Let's start with our feet gently apart. So this is very similar to Tadasana but our hands will just be resting gently by our sides and relax your knees. So if your legs are locking, just relax them and relax your shoulders. Soften your gaze. Bring inside your mouth, bring your tongue to the very tip of the top of your mouth. 
and focus on that point of the tip of your tongue and then let it relax. So it's maybe right behind your teeth. And see if you can bring a little smile to the corners of your face. And now we're going to bring our hands just for a moment to find our Dan Chen, the lower Dan Chen. So wherever your navel is, about three fingers width below that. Bring your hands, your thumbs, and your hands to rest in that place. And bring your attention to this area of your belly. And now your hands can come back by your sides. And we'll draw the energy up and then bring it down through the meridian of your body. So our motion is right between our eyebrows and that Dan Chen place. Inhaling, drawing the chi and exhaling Letting the chi come down through your body. Very nice. And we'll pause for a moment. And then this part, this is the part of the crane touching water. So we're going to bring our weight to our right foot and let our left foot kind of balance on the toes. And we'll start with going to bend our knees a little bit and we'll raise our arms up and down. So let's just practice that motion again, trying to kind of stay between eyebrows and lower down chin. And bring your awareness to your lower abdomen and now we're going to start to rise our left knee up and then gently let the toe touch and imagine you're a beautiful crane and now let that side Rest down to the ground and bring your weight to your left knee and come to balance slightly on your right toes. Bring your smile back and bring your attention to your lower belly. And it's a lot to think about, but if you can touch that, touch your tip of your tongue to your upper palate. And now let's introduce our arms. Inhaling and exhaling. And now the up and down motion with the right knee. And as you come down, let the toe touch the ground, big toe. One more time. And let that go. And we'll just close this chi with raising our arms up and then letting them come down. Very nice. 
Pause and notice how you feel. And then make your way down to your backs. And if you feel like your body temperature is starting to cool, you can put on socks or some warmer clothing. And tap your blankets and pillows nearby for your Shavasana resting pose. We'll do one last pose or asana on our backs. So once you find your way down to your back, we're going to have our feet to the ground. And we'll start by raising our pelvis up to the sky with our inhale and then letting our pelvis come down. Two more times, raising up and exhaling down. Raising up and exhaling down. And this time, if you wish, bring your wings up over your head and exhale your wings down by your sides. Raising up and lowering down. And one more time, raising your wings up. Pelvis is coming up. Hold it for one. Pause and exhale everything down to the ground. Bring your knees into your chest and wrap your arms around your shins, grasping towards outer, towards opposite elbows. Flatten the back of your neck, the back of your head. Relax your jaws. And love what your body can do for you. Pressing your lower spine to the earth. Let your shoulders relax. And open your arms wide to T and let your legs, your knees come to the right. And gently look over to the left. Releasing any last tension in the shoulders or spine. See if you can bring that beautiful smile to your face. Inhaling to the center and exhaling your knees over to the left. Gaze can be to the right, or your eyes can be gently closed. And bringing your knees back to the center. And this is when you can get ready for Shavasana. So for Shavasana, make a beautiful warm nest to hold your bird body. And that might be some pillows under your knees and maybe a warm blanket over your body. Take a couple of moments to get yourself all ready for your beautiful nest. And maybe Take another sip of water. Lower yourself down to the ground. Your hands can be outstretched by your body. Receiving. Feel the lightness in your physical body.
and I will read to you a poem by Mary Oliver from the Book of a Thousand Mornings. Poem of the One World. This morning, the beautiful white heron was floating along above the water and then into the sky of this, the one world we all belong to, where everything sooner or later is part of everything else. Which thought made me feel for a little while quite beautiful myself. Imagine yourself now as any bird that you wish. Imagine your body soaring upwards on wind currents and how little everything looks beneath you, the beauty of the earth soaring peacefully Rest here in quiet for a few minutes and I will mind the time. And when you're ready, start to wiggle your fingers and toes. And gently roll over to one side. And when you're ready, slowly come back to a seated posture. And if you wish to invite jhana or chin mudra, once again, you can make the shape that actually looks like a little bird beak of the thumb and the index fingers together. Jhana mudra would be facing up and chin mudra would be facing down inviting energy or grounding as you wish. And I'll close with two sounds of the bell. May you soar effortlessly on the wind currents of life. And thank you for sharing our practice together today. Namaste.